Hey, I'm Matt, and today we're gonna build a door handle from a hatchet. So this is a traditional handle you might find on a shed. That's boring. We're gonna install a handle that's made from a hatchet. By the way, in case you're not familiar with the term hatchet, a hatchet is just a smaller version of an ax that you typically use with one hand versus an ax that is a much longer handle and you would use with two hands. I will take you through the whole build and give you step-by-step -step instructions so anyone, including you, can build their own cool door handle from a hatchet. Or better yet, maybe I'll inspire you to use a different tool for your door handle that matches your hobbies, your personality, and your environment. For example, if you love gardening, instead of using a hatchet, you could use a garden shovel as your door handle. Regardless of what tool you use for your door handle, you'll follow the same general steps, and I'm gonna walk you through that here today. One other thing to note is that the door where I'm planning to install my door handle is a sliding barn door. But this door handle that we're designing and building can be used on any kind of door, whether it's a sliding door or a hinge door. So today, we're gonna build a super cool and unique door handle from a hatchet. Let's jump in. Let's talk about my inspiration for this build. I want this door handle to look like the hatchet was stuck into the door like someone walked up and swung the hatchet and it stuck into the door. It'd be amazing if we could just really do that, simply swing the hatchet and stick it into the door, and it would stick and be there forever. But that's not going to happen, especially with this cheap hatchet that I purchased, which is incredibly dull. So we'll be using hardware to fasten the hatchet to the door in a way that's permanent and where the hatchet's secured and does not wiggle. The handle needs to be durable enough to stand up to everyday use. Let's talk about the design. For starters, to make sure we're all using the same terminology, the hatchet has two major components. The hatchet head is the part of the hatchet that's made from cast metal, and it has the blade for chopping and cutting. The hatchet handle, in my case, is made from hickory wood, and the handle's, of course, for holding the hatchet. In order for our door handle to be sturdy when we mount it on our door, we'll want to have two points where the hatchet touches and somehow bolts to the door. So we're creating this illusion that the hatchet head is stuck in the door and the handle's up against the door as well. So it's going to need to be at an angle, maybe an angle somewhat like that, to allow the head to sit flush and we'll have a similar angle on the hatchet handle. Let's sketch this out. I'm gonna sketch the handle from the side view because I think that will better illustrate the details of this design that's currently in my head. In my case, this door is gonna be 1.5 inches thick, but really at this point in our design process, that's not critically important. Next, we'll draw the hatchet handle and note how there's a fairly specific angle how we want the hatchet handle to intersect with the door surface. This is pretty important because this is gonna be one of our points of contact. So there's the hatchet handle. And then second, let's draw the head of the hatchet. And you'll notice that it will also intersect with the door profile. So now what's most interesting and something that I want to point out is we have these surfaces that intersect with the door surface. And what we're going to end up doing is cutting that surface or that area rather that I've drawn in red, we're gonna cut that away. So in the case of the handle on the bottom, we're gonna be cutting that with just a standard handsaw and we'll be cutting that wood away. And then for the head of the hatchet, that's metal. So in that case, we'll be using an angle grinder and that will cut that in just a matter of seconds. 
So that's how we're going to cut it. And at this point, then, we'll have the hatchet sitting flush on the door. So that's going to be a good start design-wise and thinking through how we're going to make this happen. But the next thing that should be going through our heads is, well, this is great, but how the heck does this thing stay permanently attached to the door in a sturdy manner? And the way that we're going to do that is using bolts. And it's going to be different for the head, which is made of metal, and the handle, which is made of wood. For the handle, we're going to make use of a bolt, a special kind of bolt called a double hanger bolt. And the reason that this bolt is interesting is because one half of the bolt has wood threads. It's like a wood bolt. It's like a lag bolt that you can drive into wood. We'll, of course, drill a pilot hole first. The other half of the thread has machine threads, and machine threads means that we can put a nut on it. And what we'll do is screw the wood screw side of this double hanger bolt into the door handle. And then what will happen is the machine threads will stick out the, the inside of the door. And then we'll just simply put a washer on the bolt and we'll put a nut and we'll make it tight. And that will hold the handle well. But what about the head of the hatchet? This is metal. So what are we going to do here? Well, I think the best thing to do is take some threaded rod, or in my case, I'm just going to use a quarter 20 bolt, and I'm going to cut the head off. And then that's essentially the same thing as threaded rod. And what we're going to do is then weld this bolt onto the front surface of the head of the hatchet. And so what I'm going to illustrate here is in green is where a weld will have to take place. And then once we have a quarter 20 threaded rod or essentially a quarter 20 bolt coming through the door, which is the same threading as our double hanger, by the way, we'll put a washer on it just like before and we'll put a nut on it. And voila, we have the hatchet securely and permanently attached to the door. And the other thing that we've achieved is that we have hidden all of the mounting hardware from the outside of the door, and therefore we're keeping up with this illusion that someone came and just stuck the hatchet into the door. One other thing about the door where I'm installing my handle, it's a sliding door, and this could be relevant to your situation as well. Given that a sliding door needs to be flush against, in my case, a shed, I cannot have any hardware extending beyond the back of the surface of the door. So this is easily solved. What we'll do is recess the washer and the nut on the back side of the door or inside of the door as I want the sliding door to have a flush back so it can be as close as possible to the shed itself and slide, of course, without the nut scraping on the shed. If this doesn't make sense, no worries. You'll see this later in the build process. Let's talk about materials and tools for this build. First, from a materials perspective, you'll need a hatchet or some other tool that you want to use as your door handle. You'll also need one double hanger bolt. This is that funky bolt that has quarter 20 machine threading on one side and wood screw threading on the other side. You'll also need one quarter 20 two inch bolt. You'll need two quarter inch washers and you'll need two quarter 20 lock nuts. There are links for all the materials in the description below. Second, from a tool perspective, we're going to need a handful of things. We're going to need a wood saw in order to cut the wood handle. In my case, I'll be using a Japanese pull saw. And if you don't own a Japanese pull saw, I would strongly urge you to buy one. They're inexpensive and they're fantastic. Next, we're going to need a drill and a 732nd drill bit. We're going to use this to drill a pilot hole in the wood handle. And we'll need an angle grinder, or alternatively, you could use a metal bandsaw to cut the hatchet's metal head and trim the head off the bolt as well. And then finally, you're going to need a welder so that we can weld the bolt to the head of the hatchet. All the links for all the tools are in the description below. Okay, enough talking. Let's get into the shop and let's build this door handle. See you in there. If you imagine this is the door, we're going to want the handle to attach in this orientation. But specifically, what I'd like is for the handle to look as if the axe is 
sunk into the wood and that's what's holding it. So what I'm gonna do is take this scrap piece of wood. I'm gonna take this pencil and what I'm gonna do is strike an angle that will allow me to cut a portion of the ax head and a portion of the handle in a way that it will be able to sit flush against the exterior of the door. I'm gonna cut the handle using a basic Japanese pole saw. I'll use that to carefully cut at the right angle uh, using my cut mark. I'm gonna be using a angle grinder. This is a cheap one from Harbor Freight with a cutting wheel, a very thin wheel that we'll use to cut here. Now, we look at that scrap piece of wood again, and we think about how it's going to be connecting to the door. You can see that we have a flush fit here, and we still need to cut down here. Now we can see this has a nice way that it meets. So what I'm gonna do is put a coupler on there, which is nothing more than a big nut. Lock this. Into my handy dandy clamp. And then we're gonna use my cutoff tool to cut the head off the bolt. Now this bolt probably has zinc on it, which is dangerous to breathe. So I've got a fan blowing off camera that's blowing all the toxic fumes out an open garage door that you can't see either. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a cut. Okay, so you can see that the bolt head uh, which is warm, but I can hold because I've got gloves on. Uh, in fact, it's not warm, it's hot. Uh, but I was able to cut that off and we don't need that. That'll be garbage. Next, we're gonna put a slot in the head. We're gonna put a slot that is one quarter of an inch deep and it's the width of our bolt and our bolt is one quarter of an inch. And we'll do that just doing separate passes with the grinder against the hatchet head. One of the things that was really important, and I was paying attention, but I didn't really talk about it before I started, cutting into the hatchet head was that we want this bolt to come out from this face here in a perpendicular manner. And I think we've achieved that here. Now the tape was just to allow me to mark. So I'm gonna carefully remove that knowing that the hatchet head is very hot. And there you have it, we've got it perfectly notched and our bolt fits in perfectly. One other thing that I wanted to mention, which those of you that do a lot of welding are well aware of this, but this is really a call out for those of you that maybe do less welding or no welding. And that is the complication of welding a large piece of steel that has a lot of thickness to a smaller piece of steel that doesn't have a lot of mass. And what I wanted to talk about is that while we're welding, it takes a lot of energy and time to heat up the face of the ax or the head of the ax because it has a lot of mass and there's a lot of steel to heat. So it takes considerably longer 
to create a molten pool of metal to basically melt this head. In contrast, it takes very little time to melt part of this bolt. So keep in mind that what we're doing with welding is we're creating an arc from this filler material to the objects that we're welding together and we're actually melting this object, which is the axe head, we're actually melting this object, which is the bolt, and then we're mixing in filler material and combining it together and creating one piece. Soldering is when you essentially glue it together with metal, for lack of better description. Welding is when you're fusing the metals. We're literally creating a pool of molten metal and we will join uh, this uh, axe and this bolt together. And so in order to create the pool of molten metal on the axe, it's gonna take more time. So what I'm gonna do while welding is spend a little bit more time heating up the metal on the axe head. And once I feel like I've got a molten pool, I'm gonna quickly zigzag over to the bolt because the bolt will melt very quickly. So that's the technique I'm gonna use. And if I didn't do that and I wasn't careful, uh, what would happen was I would probably create a weld that wouldn't hold because I would melt into the bolt, but I would really only create surface adhesion to the ax head. It's critically important that the ax head and the bolt line up on the same plane as you can see here. Now that I've tacked the back side of the bolt on each side of the axe head, I'm going to come around and finish out the weld to make sure that this is a bomber connection. So this weld is probably ridiculous overkill, but I want to make sure, like I said earlier, that this bolt can withstand a ton of side force as I'll be pulling and pushing on my handle, given that it's going to be on a sliding barn door. Last step from a welding perspective is we want to smooth out this weld on each side so it's not as obvious that we have a monster weld there. And we're gonna throw a little satin black on the head so it doesn't look like we just were welding and grinding. Next step, we wanna take this, which essentially is a bolt with a wood screw on one end and a machine screw on the other end. And the way that you install this is we put in the we put a hole for the wood side first perpendicular to this face so we'll chuck up the drill i'm going to use a punch to put the hole in the place that i want i'm going to put it a little bit higher than center Exact placement doesn't matter. 
Uh, what does matter when I'm drilling, I want to be perpendicular to this face. I want it to go in at a 90 degree angle. So I'm going to get this, I'm going to try and hold this at the correct angle. And drill down. Now be careful to make sure you don't go all the way through. Shake it out, and then we need to screw this in. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw in uh, by grabbing the wood threads. This is gonna be actually in the wall, so For the installation of the hatchet handle, we're going to get a feel for where we want the hatchet to be. Now keep in mind that I want to do something interesting. I want to put the hatchet at an angle. Rather than installing it perfectly upright, I think having the hatchet at a slight angle looks kind of funky and cool. So I'm going to put mine in an angle. Um, I do want to be careful that I have clearance for my hardware here that I use to secure the door. What I'm going to do is mark the location of my screw holes using a pencil or a pen. In my case, I wanted to open the door a tiny bit because my Byron door goes up against some trim. So now with proper clearance in the back, so I'm not going to drill anything accidentally, I'm going to go ahead and drill out the holes all the way through. And I'm going to be careful to hold my drill perpendicular to the hole the best I can. So I drilled my holes and I drilled them the best I could, but the bolts are not lining out, not lining up perfectly. There's a little bit more resistance than I'd like installing this. So what I'm going to do is widen the bottom hole. And the reason I want to widen the bottom hole versus the top hole is I have this large base for the bottom hole that can cover up a larger hole in the door and continue to support that illusion that the handle's just stuck in the door because no hardware is showing. Next up, in order to make sure that I can have my door completely flush against my shed, and this is the back of the sliding door, by the way. I've got my top hole right here. I tried to circle it in green marker for you. And the bottom hole right here, which is also circled in green marker. The first thing we need to do is allow the nut to be recessed. And the way that we're going to do that is by drilling a 7 eighths inch hole on top of the existing hole from the backside. And I'm using just a flat 7 eighths paddle bit. And almost to the last step, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to reinsert the hatchet into the door. Now that we've recessed a cavity for the nuts. And then what we're going to do is take a washer, quarter inch washer, and a quarter 20 lock nut. And we're going to put that on both of the bolts. And we'll tighten it with a socket and we'll know we're done when the handle does not wiggle and we've got a super firm compression on the door ladies and gentlemen the last step is that we need to trim this top bolt because in my case this was a two and a half inch bolt if you recall, and it's sticking out beyond the surface of my back door, which is gonna be a problem as my door needs to glide and go along the surface of the shed. So I'm gonna cut this off, final step, with an angle grinder and a cutting disc.
So there you have it. We built a pretty unique door handle from a hatchet, and I think it turned out pretty well. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope that it inspired you to build something. That is what's most important. And by the way, I've got an idea, so let me know in the comments below if you're interested in a future video that would feature a no welding version of a hatchet door handle. Also, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or comments. And then please click subscribe if you thought this was worthwhile and you'd want to see more videos like this in the future. And then finally, a very sincere thank you for making it through the entire build video. We'll see you next time.